what is helping you? I mean, you obviously yeah, yeah. have your specific protocol. Is, is it lifestyle factors? Is it a bunch of different things, medication and supplements? So yeah. What, what do you do to really just handle your depression? So it is, it is a bunch of things. I mean, I think the medications give me a little bit of a floor. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they give me a floor. They don't really elevate my mood by any ways, but they give me a floor. So I don't bottom out too far. Yeah. Um, and I take like, actually very small doses, like lower than therapeutic doses of a couple of different meds, but like together, they kind of just help me just enough. I look like, I look for things in the medication area that help me just enough. And then the rest I want to kind of do on my own. Um, one is because I don't want to have that altered feeling Two, I want to reduce side effects and I'm an athlete and things can cause you to, um, you know, affect my resting heart rate or other things I'm trying to work out. So, you know, minimal there, but I get for a base. And then outside of that, um, you know, I use fitness a lot. Um, I use it to kind of get me outside, enjoy the nature. I use it to kind of get endorphins going. Um, I use light box therapy every morning. Mm-hmm. So it's something I started using for seasonal depression, but now I do it yearly. Um, and so mm-hmm. I use like a light box. Do what? It's, it's a, yeah. Got to explain what that is. So light box, it's 10,000 lux. It's a certain brightness mm-hmm. and literally you want to sit, uh, within like a foot away from it and I'll put it to like side of me. I'll do my computer, read a book or something and do it for like 20 minutes in the morning. And like, so I cut out caffeine from my complete diet, but that like that light box therapy, like it's like a cup of coffee. I mean, I feel so awake, alert. It suppresses melatonin, helps my sleep cycle. Um, and so that definitely gives you a big boost in the morning. And in the winters, there's also research to show that this, the sunlight increases serotonin your retina. So like I've noticed like a mood difference from doing that. Yeah. So I've stuck with that. Outside of that, nutrition wise, um, you know, we were talking about this in a plant, uh, plant based podcast, but I try to have a lot of different leaf, leafy greens, a lot of variety. Um, there's a lot to do with probiotics, prebiotics, you know, gut health. So I try to get my variety of good bacteria, which is, I think, essential. And kind of moving away from that a bit, um, people surrounding myself. Um, I used to post on my Instagram about this, but like, you know, what really pulls people down, or I've seen a lot is when you surround yourself by people that, you know, are either doing behaviors that are counterproductive or that are really pessimistic or that are doing activities, things that can pull you down. Like if you're around people that are more inspirational, that are going towards your goals, that give you like insight into yourself and how you're behaving and, you know, how you're interacting the world. Like, I think those can, I think that can be a huge game changer too. So like community and people. Yeah. So um, yourself with positive people and, and people that you want to. And then you know, emulate that that's huge. And then on the uh, other thing I do too, in the winters, um, and this is kind of debatable out there too. Um, so in the winters, when I actually have seasonal depression, I will go for like a couple months, I will do testosterone therapy for a few months in the winters. Hmm. Um, because it actually does help my mood significantly. Now there's like, and my my T levels are on the lower side, but I don't like do it where like a bodybuilder does it. I do it like just enough to get my levels to like a little higher. So in the winters, like my libido is good. My energy is good. I feel like working out. I feel like eating well. Um, and I found that to be a good augmentation. The winters help me out a little bit. And then after a few months, I come off of it. So it doesn't really affect my overall testosterone levels. Right. And um, as a little bit of augmentation. Interesting. So, yeah. How do you do that with the pellets cream injection? Um, so I tried with the pellets and my body didn't metabolize it properly. Um, so I did it with the, I ended up switching just the injections. Okay. Um, like twice a week when I do do it and I do it like, so I wasn't doing it for a while because I was competing in a lot of sports where, you know, because, and it's, it's actually, I think MMA is changing now. It's for some people that are letting them do TRT mm-hmm. because like, if they're actually diagnosed with low T, yeah. but it's still controversial. So when I was competing significantly, i would stay completely away from it. But now that I'm kind of doing my own fitness feats and stuff um, in the winters, you know, I use it to help my mood and just right. increases the quality of my life. Yeah. And that, that makes sense too, especially if this is a, a, for another podcast, but if, you, if you're measuring everybody's testosterone levels and they're all within a certain range, whether you yeah. use something to boost that up for me, I have lower and I have multiple concussions with the that could be from that. Maybe it was too much weed in college. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like you don't really know what it is, but my levels are lower than what they should be if you're average 38 year old man. So 
at some point I, you know, probably get on that on a consistent basis as well. Right now I, I do peptides, which that, the peptides help me out sure. um, tremendously with the healing too, is, is, is great as well. All right. Testosterone, so lifestyle, sleep, um, getting the photons in the eyes. Uh, obviously the, the eating is huge. Anything else that oh. you're doing? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's some supplements. Um, so there's like, I do a couple of supplements. I, I, so one I swear by is um, when I cut out caffeine for my energy level to have it be really consistent and because I do so much physical activity and stuff, I take COQ10 and PQQ. Mm. Um, and that was reckon, recommended to me from a psychiatrist along with the idea of like increasing mitochondrial density. And I would say like, after being on it for a few months, like my energy level significantly went up. Mm. So like, and I take probably like, I'll take around, I think, I think 500 milligrams of COQ10. So I take it definitely like I pushed a little higher okay. and then PQQ, I think I take about 80 milligrams. So it's definitely a little higher dose, but like, I found that to be really helpful. Um, I do fish oil and with fish oil, there's some confusion. So like the clinical studies out there show that like around one to two grams, you know, people think one to two grams of fish oil is going to help me with your depression, but fish oil is actually made up of EPA and DHA. They're a little different. The, uh, phospholipid bilayer, like the phospholipids, basically the, the fat molecule is a little different. And so the studies were actually done with one to two grams of EPA and fish oil. So like I take my fish oil and make sure it has one to two grams of EPA in it. Mm. Um, I take vitamin D. I take about 5,000 IU. Um, I take something called a green um, oat extract. Um, so there's another type of, so this is, this is a new one that was brought to my, brought to my attention. It actually, is, it's actually pretty potent. It's a green oat extract. And basically there's something called an MAOIB. So like a little side note, we'll give you a little bit of science here in your brain, right? So you have cells that you have these neurotransmitters, right? Mm -hmm. That go between cells that creates communication and gets your brain, you know, firing and communicating um, in between the brain cells, there's little things called MAOIs and they're like little Pac-Man that eat up the little neurotransmitters. So it's, it, so, um, green oat extracts and MAOIB. So it blocks the little Pac-Man for beating up the dopamine ones. So it increases dopamine in the brain. Mm. But, you know, I was kind of questioning it originally, but it's actually a, a pretty potent one out there for a mm. supplement. Green oat extract? Yeah. Yeah. What, what is that? What is that from? <laughs> green oats. I don't green, green, To be I, honest. I don't know what the hell a green oat is. <laughs> yeah. There's, um, I think it's called, I want to say dopamine um, is yeah. Wild green oat extract. Um, I want to say it's called dopamine is the, the one I take, but yeah, no, it's a little unique out there. Yeah. That's like where you hear, oh, used to hear the, the, the depression, uh, TV commercials, the uh, MAOI inhibitors. So it's probably, it's working on, on that same pathway, huh? Yeah. And then there's another good one out there that's, um, it can be prescription and now it's also, you can get as a supplement. It's called L methylfolate. Mm -hmm. So, um, there's folic acid and then L methylfolates, the more bio bioavailable form. So directly crosses blood vein barrier. And the idea behind that, like, so basically if antidepressant didn't work doctors, then, I mean, if some doctors know about it, they prescribe L methylfolate because the idea is that your brain just doesn't have enough neurotransmitters to make it work. And L methylfolates replenishes neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was really helpful to me too. Um, yeah. So like it was a combination of like supplements, you know, some depression medication and like just really big life changes. Yep. I, I think, you know, the, the life changes and obviously you talk about it open and honest and uh, whether that's talking with a therapist or friends or podcasts, I, I think that is going to help tremendously.